Hey everybody, it's uh, Monday, December 16th. Uh, continuing to work on our trucks. Um, what we're doing now is some of the more fun part of it. We've uh, cut out and trimmed a new body shell for the honcho. Um, so we'll be uh, masking this up and uh, doing a little airbrushing on it, painting it up, getting this ready to go. Um, Two-piece body on that. The, this is basically the back half. It's a cage type affair. And it's got our accessories on it. The, the front half bolts too. So that half's done. So we'll be doing this half here. This is a uh, wax sand, which is a uh, you know clear polycarbonate, I guess. Um, what I've done so far is, of course, I've trimmed it out, got the body mounting holes, got the holes for the rear cage drilled in it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is hopefully the camera's picking it up. I've actually taken a sharpie and I've designed. Well, freehanded a design on the shell on all the different panels, and hopefully it'll come out halfway decent looking. I've uh, put this on the outside of the shell in Sharpie. Um, these this shell is covered by a thin plastic overspray protector on the outside. So when we get all done, we'll pull pull that off, and all the Sharpie lines will come right off. As it is uh, Lexan, we're going to be painting this on the inside, um, so it'll be very, very shiny out through the plastic itself. Okay, so with the design etched on, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scuff all the areas that are going to get painted with my red scotch bright, and then we're going to wash the body in um, warm water and um, dish washing soap, dish detergent, and dry it. And then we'll start to mask it up. Okay, so we've scuffed our body on the inside and we've washed it in um, just warm water and dishwashing liquid, dried it off. And now what we're going to do is we're going to apply the factory uh, window masking and stuff like that and get the windows all taped off and our headlights which are also going to remain clear as and of course that everything is going to remain clear we did not scuff um, it's not really a sanding it's just a scuffing it just a little bit to break the surface and give the paint just a little bit of something to tooth into so we'll uh, now put these on Okay, so we've got our windows masked up using the supplied mask and the headlights. The headlights remain clear. There's actually some extra Lexan buckets that glue in behind those that will hold the LEDs for the lights. So now that that's done, we'll start uh, masking off our design. Okay, this is going to be a three color um, paint job. So, we're going to need to mask off the lighter colors because when you spray, you spray dark first, work your way lighter with your color. And we're using some 3M um, tape. Kind of the tape of choice. Mm. 
Okay. We'll start with the roof panel. We've laid our tape in. Now, what we're going to do is if we hold, I, I don't know if the body, if the camera is picking that up, but if you hold this up to the light, you can see our design through the tape. So what I do, take a fine Sharpie, hold it up to the light, and I will remark our design on the tape. And then we will cut it out of our mask. Okay. Sometimes I, sorry, I, I'm sure my camera angles aren't really great, but. And the thing about um, freehand designs is. You don't have to be super exact when you cut it out. Just have a, you know, reasonable following. If you, you know, you're outside, what you traced on the outside is what you really want. Try to replicate it on the inside as much as possible. Okay. Tape's kind of funny because sometimes the Sharpie doesn't want to actually mark on the tape. So there we've got our um, little design traced on there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a X-Acto knife with a new sharp blade. Always start with a new blade when you're doing this. And we're going to cut out our design. And we're going to do that by lightly, and I, especially with a sharp blade, I say it lightly. Following the, the design that we just marked out. Weed out what we just cut out. Okay. Like so. So that's the first um, first part of our design, which is now masked. Now we're going to be using three colors on here. We're going to be using a, a green, a white, and a black. 
The majority of the back of the uh, cab is going to be black and the majority of the front will be white. So that's why we're leaving this. This will actually be some white that will show through into the uh, into the black. to do but it is somewhat tedious you have to be very careful as you're cutting it out because the biggest thing is you want to cut your tape but you don't want to score too deep into your Lexan with your knife that's the one thing that you don't want to do because you'll you'll actually cut the cut the lexan and create a weak point, which is what we do not want to do. This is the hardest part for me when painting one of these is coming up with a design to begin with. I'm not very imaginative on the, you know, figuring out what I want my design to look like. I mean, quite often we'll go through several before I settle on one that um, I like. So hopefully this one will work out right as, as we're going along so far. And from the other side, we're following our following our design fairly close. Okay, so there you have it. There's our design on the roof is masked out. As you can see, masked on the inside. And we're gonna use the same procedure and we're going to do the, um, do the hood and the sides. And we'll be back. Okay. So we've got all of our masking on, following the same procedure um, that we followed before. So what we've masked off here is what's actually going to be the white or lighter color that we're going to be using. The, um, the way that I paint on these is I always paint dark first, working my way light. Um, that, it's easier to get a good coat of you know color that way. The darker colors tend to no, dark and lighter colors, and they will um, they just change the whole tone of a lighter color. So I like to work dark to light, and then you don't have that problem. 
The other thing that I do is once you get all your masking on, I have this little tool right here, which is just a kind of a plastic spatula, and I like to burnish the edges of all the mask and make sure the edges are down, down, you know, tight, so you don't get any bleed under the mask tape. Um, they also make a liquid mask that you can brush on the inside of the body and then you can uh, you know just do the basically the same thing and cut out the mask and peel it out and do it that way um, personally I've used liquid mask a couple times and I'm just more comfortable with with tape so that's about it um, so we're pretty much ready to go we're going to take and um, we'll be doing black first we'll be uh, airbrushing this airbrushing it on okay the paint that we're going to be using on our body is from a company called Parma and it's called Fast Color um, it's a waterborne um, paint it's flexible non-toxic um, cleans up very easily and the the great thing about it is you can spray it right out of the bottle um, so what we have here, what a, I have a hard time coming up with ideas for paint schemes and a lot of times in color combinations and a lot of times I'll come up with something that you know in my mind is going to be pretty good and just what I want but in all actuality once you get the colors laid down you know you really don't like it. So what I do is I do one of these and what this is is a just a clear plastic um, sleeve you know from like a notebook and I'll I'm going to tape this off uh, of course black is going to be our predominant dark color here I'll spray that on first and I'm going to spray black on here and once I take this tape off I'll have you know a line that is similar to the mask that we have on our our body and then I'll be able to play around a little bit with my green uh, splash color going in there and the white and get an idea of what all that looks like together before we actually spray all that on the body itself so it's just something I like to do and it just makes me a little bit more comfortable with some of the selections now we're using a a Badger airbrush this is a Crescendo, Crescendo 175T um, we're regulated right now for this main color which is basically just a lot of heavy spray at um, right around 35 psi we're putting through it um, it is a dual action brush um, so we can vary the amount of paint that we put out so that's about it um, the air supply that we use for airbrushing is we actually use a scuba tank um, we have a scuba tank and regulator that we uh, hose into another regulator and that's where I actually regulate the pressure for this and then of course you know you have your regular airbrush hose off of that so everything is clean we're ready to go we'll take the seal off our paint because the paint of course is new so it's got a seal in there which we don't really need for anything our cap back on and then we'll put some color into the cup like I said it sprays very nicely right out of the bottle with no issues now let's get it going on this first spraying out fairly well um, the one thing that I like to do when I'm spraying on the bottle body is I like to spray away from the mask not directly at an edge and that tends to reduce the you know the bleeding on some tape that you have if your tape is you know lifted up a little bit and is not quite right this paint here uh, 
as opposed to um, like a solvent based paint like um, Pactra is a lot less resistant to bleed under mask. But what I'll do is I'll put down a light coat around all the edges first and we're basically going to use that as like a tack coat and it'll kind of seal off our masking and then we'll hit it with progressively heavier coats after that until we achieve you know the, the full coverage. So. down and like I say we'll progressively use heavier coats as we get building up our coverage but the first one here is actually kind of light The nice thing I like about this brush is it has the ability to lay down a fairly heavy coat of paint if you want. Much of the this is actually going to pick up. Okay, so there you go. Our first coat is pretty much transparent. You can kind of see through it which is fine. Okay. We'll let that we'll let that flash off and I'll um, hit this with probably two more coats would be enough to give us uh, full coverage. But this here is still somewhat transparent in places, and that's our uh, our tack coat. Okay, so we've got our black all on, ended up three coats, gave us the coverage that we needed, and we're going to try our second color. I've already tried it on my test panel, kind of I like it. So let's uh, see what we can get here. turned our air pressure down to about 20 psi. some color in there. I'm not sure how much of this is. Uh, 
getting for you guys, but we're trying here. Okay, get a little bit of that. Just gradually. Gradually building up the edges. We're lining the black with green, which is actually called fast fluorescent green. Going slow, doing our build up. Getting it on there nice. Okay, so that's what we're kinda kinda going for. Right there. A little bit more right in there. Kind of like that. All right, looking good. Looking good. So we'll continue to do this. Building it up. And we'll get it all on and uh, we'll be back. Okay, so we've got our green accent color on. Just outlining the edge of our design with the green. And now we're going to finish it off with a few coats of our last color, which would be white. We're going to uh, bump up, we turn down our pressure for the green to 20 PSI. So we're going to bump us up, back up to about 35 for the white, because we're doing broad coverage. Now the one thing you can also do, which is kind of neat, with this particular paint, is if it seems to be you want a little bit faster dry time, you can actually speed that up with uh, heat. So if you just apply a hair dryer to it, it'll speed it right up for you, which is kind of cool. And just like before, we're just going to lightly mist in. Our white, for like a tack coat effect, After we get the, our tack coat on, we will um, hit it a little bit harder. Of course, now with our white, we actually don't have the concern of, you know, the masking. Because you know we've already removed our mask. You 
just on our windows and our, our headlights, where our headlight buckets will go. And the headlight buckets will actually will spray silver. They get mounted up behind. So it's very simple. Um, like I say, three colors. Not too hard at all, just a freehand design. Um, these body shells take a fair amount of abuse on here. So they don't last, you know, forever, but especially on this type of thing, they'll last quite a while. All right. So that's what we're kind of getting so far. We're going to let that dry for a couple minutes, maybe hit it with our hair dryer, and then we'll do a couple more coats for good coverage, and uh, I'll bring you back and show you the final result. Okay, and there we have it. There's our completed shell. The masking's pulled. It's going to install our headlight buckets as part of our light kit. Uh, very simple, three three colors, very easy to do, not a, not a big deal, and they come out pretty good. So that uh, will conclude our. Uh, let me get you here. That will conclude our painting. Maybe. conclude our painting and um, next up we'll get this together and uh, we'll be installing our white kit. So as always thanks for uh, watching, commenting, rating, subscribing. We appreciate it and uh, we'll uh, catch you all the next time. Thanks.